metal assignment, we learned about direct reflection. Like metal, glass produces direct reflection of the light source. But glass is different. While it is highly reflective, it is also transparent. This affects how we can light it in significant ways. When we light metal, we're most interested in the lighting of the surfaces facing the camera. When lighting glass, especially clear glass, we are most concerned about lighting the edges. If we were to front or side light the surface of the glass directly with a small light source, we would see multiple distracting highlights over its surface. The glass edges would also be poorly defined. Two key requirements for lighting glass are producing strong lines across the edges of the subject and eliminating any distracting reflections. There are also two main lighting approaches commonly used to achieve these requirements. The first is known as bright field or dark line lighting. As the descriptions imply, the light source or background is a bright field of white or near white, which produces dark lines in the glass. It's fairly easy to create this setup. You can either light a white seamless surface behind the glass or diffuse the light through a translucent material such as tracing paper or Roscoe Lux, shown here. This light source must be just large enough to fill the camera's field of view when the subject is composed as desired. If it is larger, some light can wrap around the glass from the outer edges and reduce the strength of the dark edge. To eliminate this, you can move the glass further away from the background, thus allowing less of that light to wrap around, or you can reduce the size of the light source using black cards to mask it. To meter a scene such as this, you can use an incident meter facing the light source, not the camera. Shoot at the indicated reading and bracket if a different tone is desired. The second method is actually a variant of the first, known as dark field or white line lighting. As in the above setup, with a larger light source, the glass is backlit. What creates the white line is the introduction of a dark field background, shown here in the form of a gobo, or a dark card smaller than the light source itself. Again, our background needs to be just large enough to fill the camera's field of view, no larger. If the card is too large, it will block too much of the white edge light framed by the card background. Edge definition improves when the subject is moved closer to the camera, just as in the white line method. Take your light reading as in the previous example, but this time you may need to stop down from that reading to get a proper exposure. Bracket and view your histogram and image to confirm proper exposure. Watch for potential flare as the light source can enter the camera lens directly. If needed, frame the single black card background with additional cards just out of frame to cut the extraneous light. You may also see more reflections in the glass with this setup. Use gobos and black fabric or paper to block these reflections and any light spilling from behind the diffusion. Most of the time, we will choose either one or the other of these two approaches when lighting glass. However, you could create some situations to combine the two successfully, as in the underlit on frosted acrylic situation shown here. It is mostly dark light, bright field, but the glass edge becomes white in the darker areas of the image. These methods are very good at defining the shape of the glassware. Next, we'll look at how we can add some surface definition to the image using the dark field white line approach where it is most visible. You can achieve surface definition through the same method used in lighting metal, using a large diffuse source to create direct reflection in the glass. The source will either need to be quite close to the subject or be several times larger than the glassware to cover the large family of angles required. Feathering and dimming the light source behind the diffusion will keep the reflection from becoming too hard-edged and distracting. So far, all the techniques described eliminate the appearance of a horizon line in the image. As shown here, if desired, you can light the background separately with a small reflector and perhaps a grid spot to define that edge. When we fill a glass with liquid, we have an additional problem to solve. The liquid in the glass behaves like a lens, refracting and bending the light, and including surroundings outside the set in the liquid. You might think that using a larger source would be the best solution to this problem, but as we learned in the earlier exercises, that can reduce the edge definition. Instead, 
will simply move the camera closer to the glass. If necessary, you can go to a shorter focal length lens to get a similar image size, but be aware that this can introduce perspective distortion. If we need to shoot a liquid-filled glass against a darker background, we'd have to place a reflector card behind the glass. You can determine its approximate size and shape by illuminating the glass with a test light through it and projecting onto the card. Trace it at the proper angle and cut this card out. Light this card from above and behind the glass to get the true color of the liquid to appear. Barn doors or gobos may be required to keep the light off the front of the glass. Because the card is refracted by the glass, it will not completely fill the area. Some black or other surroundings will show as in the white background shot with no card. A solution to this problem would be to matte spray the back of the glass, which will spread out the card reflection. For a subject like a beer glass or a beer bottle, you may want to add some moisture to the surface and create a surface reflection to define it. The glass must have a tooth to it, created by a substance such as glass wax or rain -X, to allow the moisture to beat up and not run off the surface as readily. Some drugstore glycerin or corn syrup added to the water, then sprayed on the glass, will enhance this effect. The principles and techniques learned in this video will serve you well when photographing glassware and liquids in glass.